Hello and welcome, Christine Hill with Sunshine Prosthetics, or as I am more affectionately known as, uh, the Light Lady. And if you are new here, I am a certified orthotist prosthetist in North Carolina. Here we talk about all things prosthetics, caring for diabetic patients and caring for people with limb loss and going through their journey. So you guys are uh, once again joining me on the road and this was one of those weeks where you think it's gonna go one way and then it becomes something completely different. So we'll dive into that and then we'll also be following up with one of our above knee patients and checking in on his progress. You guys will also be seeing the results of some of our uh, custom laminations for some deliveries that are coming up and also gonna be looking at a transfemoral surgery that was far from the ideal. So thank you for joining me and let's get to it. Weird and tough week in all aspects and we're only halfway through. It is only Wednesday. Yesterday, prosthetic delivery schedule, that beautiful butterfly socket. I was so excited about it and the patient was so excited about it. She thought it was absolutely beautiful. And poor thing, she had a tibial plateau fracture. And then was hoping to show you guys too, because I was really excited. I have another patient that is progressing to using a cane instead of the walker. But we get there and his nurse was there and he had a couple wounds on his sound side toes and so she was getting all that bandaged up and with all the bandage it would not fit in his current shoe and so we were not able to see him walk with the cane. I just had posted that video about shoes and keeping your feet healthy especially diabetic patients that are so prone to injury and slow healing. So we talked to him about those things and what to look for in getting shoes and looking to getting a good pair of uh, diabetic shoes so we can keep that sound side um, healthy. All right, so we are now going to be checking in with one of my transfemoral patients. I've been seeing him for a couple years now and super, super proud of his progress. We are seeing him with outpatient therapy and he stated that one of his goals is to eventually get away from the walker and using just a cane. So here he is with his lovely wife uh, using the walker and we're looking at posture, step lengths, are they equal? And now he is in the parallel bars. And one of the things that we're talking to him about is shifting weight onto that prosthetic side, which is gonna be harder to do when he doesn't have the walker to depend on to put weight through his arms. That is some of the homework that we left him with, be working on those weight shift exercises, getting used to putting more weight on that prosthetic side and less through his arms when he's using the walker and also posture and it's especially nice being in the outpatient setting because he has that big mirror that he can look at one thing i am always training my patients is it's very very tempting especially in the beginning to be wanting to look down at your feet when learning how to use a prosthesis and over time we like to teach and educate our patients to be looking up because you know it's like riding a, if you've ever ridden a horse you the horse is going to get want to go where your eyes are going and we don't want our patients we don't want you guys going to the ground so keep your eyes up walking forward but he's doing great and like I said, really proud of his progress. So now we're gonna dive into that amputation surgery that was far from ideal. Therapy asked me to just come in and take a look because they were concerned. And from the pictures, you can see why she may have been concerned. Very prominent cut end of the bone, that femur. When I was palpating and just feeling that area, you know, I was seeing it's a skin mobile and the skin is mobile, which is good, but it's a very, very thin layer between the skin and the cut end of the bone. Really no bevel, no soft edge. It just felt like and looked like they, I mean, think of just 
cutting straight through a PVC pipe and that end of the pipe, that's what I was feeling, you know, and the therapist was asking me, and I really hope this wasn't the case because, you know, this patient, he's not a prosthetic candidate. He has a transfemoral prosthesis on his other side. And I think he may have gotten a prosthesis. Maybe not though. I'm not hundred percent sure, but he at least never used the prosthesis, was never really compliant or motivated with physical therapy. Currently in the bed all the time. When he is transferred and moved out of the bed, they need to use a Hoyer lift, core strength. And that is one of the things. So now he's a bilateral transfemoral. When it comes to being a bilateral transfemoral amputee and using prosthetics, one of the main things that we look for as an indicator of success in being able to use prosthetics, you know, are they able to sit up on the edge of the bed? Do they have that core strength to maintain that position? And can they do by manual tasks? And he is just not able to do that. Talking to with the therapist, she was concerned and I really hope it wasn't the case that physician was like, oh, he's never gonna be able to use prosthetics anyway. So, what doesn't really matter, let's just get this done quickly. Like I said, I don't know. I just really, really hope that wasn't the case. We just left her with kind of things to keep in mind moving forward for him, trying to keep that skin mobile, make sure, cause you don't, you still don't want any adhered scar tissue underneath as it continues to heal. We left her with hip extensor exercises and stretching just so that hip doesn't get contracted into a flexed position. But yeah, that's not a pretty or pleasant transfemoral above knee amputation surgery. All right, so I'm really excited to show you guys how these sockets turned out. So this is for a bilateral patient, burn patient, his old prosthetics were probably at least 15 years old and disintegrating um, as you can see from the pictures and he just really wants to be able to get back it's probably been about five years since he's been up and walking um, but just really wants to get back to it and try again with prosthetics he was able to do um, from what it sounds like really well before and so i was talking to him like hey do you want any designs on these at all and he's like you can do that and i was like yeah we can and his big thing is tasmanian devil so he was like uh what about can you put tasmanian devil on there and so we went ahead and did that and and absolutely loved how they turned out so stay tuned there will be another video probably in a couple of weeks of the delivery and we'll be able to see his reaction and see what he thinks and and how he does um so excited to see that so stick around for that and that's all i have for you guys this week so if you have any questions let me know one of the reasons for starting this channel in the first place is i had a fair amount of patients recently that have just really been struggling with anxiety and depression and really just feeling like they are all alone in their journey of limb loss and so started this channel in hopes of you know building a community that can be you know educational and encouraging for others you know with limb loss in addition to their family members and loved ones that are trying to support them as well you know along with educating and supporting other healthcare providers as well thank you for joining me on this journey and and this community and i will catch you guys next time